Ugodre is here with me. Ugodre Obichuku, he's been here a few times. He's a financial analyst. Great to be here. How are you doing? Very fine, my brother. How's the new year started off for you? Hmm. Started off well. Um, at least this year, we, we had we had a different kind of gift this year. Last year was, was the first casting, so this year was, was mobile phones. So it's just that it's not coming to me, but it's a different kind of gift. You know? let's, so let's start off with that quickly. Um, we, we, like you said, we started off the year hearing that they were going to give 10 million phones to farmers. We're not sure what for or how that's going to happen. Do you have any idea or how that's going to work? Well, um, from what I gathered, they, they had said that they wanted, you know, farmers to get um, instant messages uh, on where to get their, you know, farm products, fertilizers and co. And that it was a way to actually um, cut off, you know, the corruption in, in the, you know, the subsidy um, and process in the agricultural industry. So, and then they said, look, it's, they need, you know, the like 10 million farmers and these guys are the engineer of growth in you know in the economy so you need to give them mobile phones they need to you know get constant updates and, and blah 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 so um now and they said it's 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 um it's going to cost about 60 billion naira which um allegedly yeah 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 <laughs> which by the way it's, it's almost you know uh, 80 percent of of the budget of the ministry of agriculture itself so i guess that's why the minister came out to defend it that that it wasn't really going to come out from from the ministry's pocket that it was going to be a PPP, so which is a public um, private partnership. So, um, let me come to you. Well, well, he's not alone in the house, as you can see. Um, Tokwe Atiba is here. He's a lawyer. Um, let me just quickly go into the politics of this. There's a lot of talk about um, this phone issue right now. There's a lot of talk about whether it's viable and how it's going to affect 2013. Some are saying he's doing it to get the votes early. It came out almost at the same time when we saw posters in Abuja. How do you think this affects the politics of everything right now? First and foremost, um, in my own opinion, I must say that we don't need, or farmers do not need 10 million mobile phones. For God's sakes, do we have statistics? Do we have like um, a data bank that that you know that has like the number of all the farmers in nigeria in the first place so if the minister of agriculture who is also in the executive thinks that the next thing and the next most important thing to do is to get 10 million phones i think it's just pure wasteful but let me play devil that devil's advocate here we've always heard that the people living below the poverty line in Nigeria, somewhere 60 70 percent. I'm not sure now. We hear a lot of figures every day. Um, mobile phone coverage in the country right now is about a hundred million, yeah, about, that. about oh, rough, mm -hmm, roughly. Mm -hmm, and yeah. even at that, some of us carry two phones, so let's even say about 80 million Nigerians have phones, yeah. yes. So there's still a lot of people who do not have access to that. And if the explanation the Godric gave as to empowering these farmers, knowing prices, and all of that, doesn't that make some sense? Oh, first and foremost, my point is not whether or not we're going to give farmers mobile phones. I think before we know the number of farmers we're going to give mobile phones, we have to have a comprehensive list, like a data bank that tells us that in Nigeria, right now we have 50 million farmers, or we have um, 50 million farmers that are in the large-scale farming, and then we have probably 10 million in you know, subsistence farming and all that. We need to have statistics. We can't just call you know, huge, huge amounts and expect everybody to bite hook, line, and sinker. That is my point. Now. As to the politics of this, we have a more active youth participation now, especially online, that, that have um, a very, very large followership too. Immediately the news came out, they had already analyzed it. These are intelligent minds, young people that, that know the statistics, even probably more than some other people in government. Now they've analyzed it. I don't see any way in which that has affected or that has improved the image of Mr. President. That is in in the in the event that he's probably going to go for 2015, if, which we don't know. We'll get back to that. Um, Adedu Madi Onibokun, editor in chief of Legal Niger, is also here with us. Um, do you think our fears are just because of our antecedents? Like, over time, we're used to hearing figures and not seeing results. But there's also the school of thought that says that this minister of agriculture is not one of them. 
who's supposedly an upright man. Do you think we're jumping the gun with our fears here? Okay, with regard to the word upright, I actually have never interacted with him, so I can't really talk about that. But um, for history, we all know that um, Nigerians have lost trust for the ruling body. We do not trust our politicians, we do not trust our government. And it's not our fault, but because of our experiences over time. Now, I don't want to judge him and say, oh, um, he's a bad man, in quote, like everybody else. I would rather just give him an opportunity to show what he has. Apparently, he's doing a good job already. So if we support him some more, maybe he just might have a lot more to offer. Uh, well, I mean, um, the, the optimism is, is uh, well placed. But you see, there's, there's a bit of a um, um, misplacement of priority here. So it's not as, as if giving mobile phones is, is, um, is so much of a problem, but it's, it's you know, how you actually prioritize what you need to do. I mean, putting the better context, 60 billion or thereabout is, it's almost um, a third of our, you know, um, you know budget for, for when it works in the Ministry of Works and Development. So mobile phones to farmers, and I actually don't think the president is actually doing this to, you know, to probably, um, you votes. know, buy votes. I mean, he, he, I mean, they've actually done. Well, fair enough. Um, I think your points have kind of reflects what I've heard <laughs> since oh, this, yeah. this broke out. But um, in spite of all of this, I think the most important issue for a lot of Nigerians, regardless, is still power. And um, even a lot of columnists, a lot of people have always said that if he can fix power, he might have just delivered over the next four years, over the four years that he'll be in power, sorry. Last year, the Minister of Power resigned, and up till now, there's still no replacements for him. What do you think is going to happen in that sector this year? Well, I think there's going to be a dramatic change in the power sector. Um, without a senior minister? Yeah, yeah, I mean, with or without him. There's, I mean, the, the, I believe the structure is already there. Um, we've seen, I mean, last year was, I mean, if there was one milestone, you know, the government had, the PDP-led government had last year, it was actually you know um, the completion of the of the privatization process, as this, this the um, sending of the you know this, the discos and the of course the jenkos. So that was that was a, a very um, you know great thing to have happened to Nigeria. So this year, I believe you know the next step would be for for the successful um, bidders you know to pay up and then to start to bring into play a lot of the the things that they had promised that you know they would bring did so you, besides the figures now did you see an improvement happening this year well it's not gonna i don't think let's not deceive ourselves this is not a, a one month or a two month or even a six months transformation so it's probably going to take take some time and i mean we could we can all agree um last year on an average i mean i can confidently say look we had i mean i think uh last year on an average we've never seen power that good at least in the last decade or so i mean uh and um, over the over the holiday, well, I'm talking for for most of us here in Lagos, it's it's also been it's been very good. So there's there's a, there's this, there's a sincere purpose of direction, you know, from the side of the government to make things things happen, and I believe it will. So I'm going to come to you with something different, and um, something that also maybe made last year the worst in recent history for everybody. We can't talk about Nigeria these days without talking about Boko Haram. We might be in Lagos and be sort of detached as it were from it but the truth is that it has been, it's almost here to stay now and there's almost no direction or no clear purpose as to end it or at least curb it to some extent where are we headed first and foremost i have to make my opposition very clear i do not think there should be any room for negotiation because this thing is going to have a spiral effect i'm going somewhere with it you see, decisive action or not, the JTF is already taking decisive action, if that is what we are looking for. But you can't place something on nothing and expect it to stand. What I don't see is the political will to get this done with. Because this problem, this Boko, this Boko Haram problem, I don't think it just came up from nowhere. We already know, it's already, it's, it's everywhere that, that probably a former governor, you know, sponsored a group of people and now they've spiraled out of control. You understand? But even beyond that, I think the underlying factors are hunger, poverty. People, these, these are young people that probably are not even, that, that, that are not employed. So they are easy targets for anybody. 
you know and then we you know we are africans we like um we like we like mysterious things we like we like religion we 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 fall blindly for religion so they are ready there is a ready market you just come and tell them certain things you know and then play religion these people are still going to follow so if the government really wants to fa fight corrupt um fight boko haram as it is now as it is now we have to make sure that one these people have an alternative source of livelihood. And that means the economy must work. The economy first and foremost. It's feasible in one year. In one year, no. But definitely, a lot can be done in one year. A lot. I'll ask you guys a very quick question. Yes. I need a yes or no answer to two questions. Should the government negotiate? Yes or no? Yeah. I think do you they think should. they will? I think they are already. I mean, even, even, if, they even if they don't come out to say it. Um, look. Let's be real. We are no more in the world where, I mean, the government comes out and says, look, we can't negotiate. The only thing you can say is conditionally or unconditionally. That's all.